Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the SIE Power and Energy Sections webinar today, where the topic of discussion is blockchain-enabled transactive energy use cases. Before we start, a few webinar considerations. Attendees are reminded to ensure the volume is turned up on their device. Ensure you have a stable internet connection. This will ensure the stream quality. Attendees can ask questions via the questions panel located within the GoToWebinar control panel. And by default, the control panel is located on the right-hand side of your screen. The chat function is reserved for webinar organizers and panelists to communicate with attendees. Attendees will not be able to chat with each other, however, are encouraged to ask questions. A recording of this webinar will be made available on the SRE YouTube channel under the Power and Energy section playlist. This channel is updated regularly, so ensure you check back as often as possible for new uploads. You will find a link in the chat box to subscribe to the SRE TV channel. It is free and it's on um, YouTube. A certificate of attendance will be issued a few weeks after this webinar, once we have received the CPD validation number from EXA. I'd like to introduce you now to our host for today, is Mr. Ezra Mahlatsi. He is an advisor to the South African government. Ezra received his master's degree from the University of Pretoria, South Africa in 2013. He is currently pursuing a PhD degree at University of Johannesburg, South Africa, and he holds a position of a lecturer at the same university. His research interests on the fields of power systems optimization, smart grids, stochastic programming, electricity markets, and transactive energy. Over to um, yeah, uh, thank you, Mins, for, for the introduction and um, welcome everyone um, uh, to, the, to this talk. Um, we had one last year, so we are just following up on that one, and we hope to have a few uh, coming in the near future. Uh, like Ming said, please check on the chat list. If you want to become a member of SIEE, you can uh, click there and see how you can join. And also, it's just subscribe to the SIEE TV. So um, our, our, our um, presenter today, um, it's, it's, it's Dr. Umit Kali. Uh, Dr. Umit Kali is a seasoned technology researcher conducting academic based research activities in energy analytics, blockchain, and economics. He has 20 years of international experience in energy systems, data science, blockchain technologies, ICT, energy markets, and economics. Um, Dr. Ali is a co founder of the US based, um, the, the US based. Um, uh, startup uh, technology company that are active in advanced energy and and blockchain. Um, he is he is an associate professor of energy informatics, AI, and blockchain at the Norwegian University of Science and Technology. He is also the lead author of Digitalization of Power um, System Power Markets and Systems using in energy informatics book. Um, we will also post the link to this book shortly, and he will also just touch um, on it uh, in his presentation. Thank you. Over to you, Mix. All right. Thank you very much for the introduction, uh, and thanks for the invite, uh, as Roman means. So I will start sharing my screen. All right, I guess everyone can see my screen. If it is the case, uh, I can start. So thank you very much for the introduction and giving me this opportunity to share uh, our message and content to the larger audience. So the, today's presentation topic is as also mentioned and stated, uh, it's about blockchain enabled transactive energy use cases. So we will have approximately 40 to 45 minutes time to continue. 
Um, so this is the uh, very short agenda of today's content. I will start with a brief introduction uh, where we will start discussing the distributed ledger technology or like more popular name blockchain technology and how we can apply blockchain technology in the field of power systems and markets. And we have also a, a IEEE Standards Association, IEEE SA, working group uh, named uh, or coded P2418.5, which is also dedicated on uh, energy blockchain use cases. So I will be also talking about some uh, like aspects of uh, blockchain enabled transactive energy use cases as the main topic dictates. And uh, there will be some discussions about out outlook and concluding remarks. Uh, at the end of this presentation, there will be Q&A session as well. All right, so uh, distributed ledger technology is actually the main name of the technology. It is just right after, uh, under the distributed databases. Actually, we have uh, centralized databases and distributed databases. Many of the applications like uh, data lakes or even like relational databases uh, are like centralized databases and most of the operation operational technologies OT and IT information technologies which are associated with power markets and systems are operated uh, on the centralized databases so we will be discussing today do we really need decentralized databases if we need in which conditions and what are the capabilities of distributed databases uh, if we would like to be more specific uh, distributed ledger technology dlt is the technology's name uh, general name it's it's a kind of tree the branch of the tree and very known branch of the tree is blockchain technology therefore in many cases also in our papers position papers or conversations uh, also in industry and academia we use blockchain technology interchangeably uh, with DLT, but scientifically, uh, some of the, there will be some differences over there. If I'm talking about blockchain technology during this webinar, uh, it will be also used interchangeably. Uh, time to time, I use DLT. Time to time, I will be using blockchain technology. So before I start, I just wanted to give you a heads up. Um, actually, the distributed ledger technology. Uh, uh, it is the database uh, it, where the recorded are sh uh, the recorded values are sh uh, shared in an immutable way, recorded in immutable way, and shared in a decentralized way in digital environment. Depending on the use uh, consensus technology, uh, it is one of the main technologies of distributed ledger technology. Uh, that there will be some validation technologies uh, which will be playing the notary role validator role like like bit miners if you are talking about specifically on proof of work which is a special protocol uh, which is also behind uh, bitcoin uh, then uh, we can use proof of uh, like bit miners in this case but again i need to warn uh, in the beginning that bitcoin is not equal to distributed ledger technology at all it is just like one of the very well known fruits on that tree uh, on the branch of uh, blockchain it is very well known, but it doesn't have anything to do on many applications of energy blockchain where we apply it. For instance, it doesn't support smart contracts in many cases. In, uh, in, in we, we may use smart contracts feature of blockchain technology or distributed ledger technology. Therefore, blockchain is not representing the entire distributed ledger technology. It is just somewhere like public permissionless type of uh, ecosystem here. Just almost here and of course uh, we have like uh, blockchain technology as sub branch of uh, distributed ledger technology as i mentioned uh, the chain grows over time you can just imagine virtual uh, boxes uh, and each box will be just there these are blocks each each boxes or blocks are connected with the digital chains each and every chain is locked after the validation so i will try to have a couple of more details about that but unfortunately, due to the lack of time, uh, and it's not our primary topic here, not to discuss entire details about the technology and cryptography, I'm, I may need to just skip some details. But I would like to make sure that uh, there will be a different type of blockchains with different categories, I would say. They can be public, they can be private, permissionless, permissioned, hybrid, 
and many other technologies. So the identity management, access control, access management is another feature which is coming with blockchain technology or DLT. Immutable data recording is another feature. Cryptocurrency is another feature. And the fourth very important feature is of course smart contracts. So this is the development and uh, development of uh, blockchain technology. Actually, uh, many people may know about a mysterious paper which had been written by Satoshi Nakamoto. Uh, there is no person, most likely there is no person named as Satoshi Nakamoto, probably somewhere in Japan there might be some people, but that paper is not written by only one person probably. It can be a group of people, uh, which was the white paper where the Bitcoin as first blockchain application is declared, right? But before that, of course, there had been other activities which can be counted as uh, preliminary efforts of blockchain technology or smart contract, especially uh, uh, Nick Zabo. Uh, he is also a lawyer and computer scientist. Uh, he started working on this topic in, even in 1980s. In 1990s, they developed and proposed new approaches. But after that, 2008 is the milestone. Officially, we had blockchain technology and later on, we had other technologies as well, uh, right? Uh, Ethereum uh, platforms or Linux Foundation supported Hyperledger. It was just uh, like uh, right now it's under control of IBM. And there are many other uh, like cryptocurrencies, but at the same time, uh, the core um, DLT providers as ecosystem. And it's, as everyone knows right now, it is the daily reality after one decade. So I just need to skip this. Uh, more details on digitalization technologies, including DLT, machine learning, and other activities, uh, other use cases, which can be applied on the power markets and systems, can be seen in this recent book uh, that uh, had been shared as information. So if we continue the next slide, of course, uh, I try to overly simplify the topic uh, because of the lack of time. Under normal conditions, uh, we are using uh, centralized ledgers right if you would like to buy a house let's say with real estate agent uh, we need to check the credit score and many other details sometimes especially in the united states it takes more than one and a half months uh, to 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 complete the uh, the purchase of a house for instance because there are too many steps too many players third parties it takes time and the trusted authorities must be just using time and and to validate the transactions or your ID, if, if you are a valid person, real person or not. There are many, many other uh, authentication and aut aut uh, authentication cases. So in this case, at the end of the day, once the transaction is done, most of the uh, municipalities, they have their track records very central. So that means this is the central uh, point of failure. If something happens here, to the central authority, it happened in the uh, like in some hurricanes in uh, Haiti. Uh, some of their uh, like very very important uh, copies of their uh, real estate uh, deans or such kind of records had been just destroyed during the hurricane or national disasters or fire or whatever. So that means uh, current and classical businesses are relying on such kind of many in many cases uh, centralized databases and with many players, many interactions. You need to build a trust. Uh, trust is very important here. Uh, without any trust, without uh, it's not possible to make any business or any type of collaboration as well. So building the trust can be costly, right? How we build the trust in real applications like this. So we have notary, we have many different other steps to check if that person is real, if the money is available, if money is fake or real, uh, if the credit scores are available for United States, for instance. That, that means there are too many steps on play and very expensive. So, but if you shift to the new business style, uh, which is based on distributed ledger technology or blockchain, so as the name dictates, we have distributed ledgers. So then that means if anything change in the ledgers, if it is validated, it will be broadcasted to the each players here, each node. We call them crypto uh, node. There are different terminology for that, but let's try to simplify it. So if that, something changes, if it is validated, all the track record is shipped, uh, distributed everywhere. Okay, why is that good for? It is good because it is very difficult to fake and it builds a trust. Uh, I just literally uh, use this word uh, very carefully because this is the core technology, uh, the feature of the technology as well. 
So uh, it is very difficult to hack the system because in order to hack the system, there are different methodologies, of course, but I always simplify the situation. Uh, we need to hack more than 51% of entire nodes here. If you are talking about Bitcoin, for instance, there are millions of nodes. If you would like to hack the entire system, you need to just afford to hack uh, more than 51% of the entire nodes connected to the system. So it is unlikely. It's also possible, but very unlikely. So there is an economy of attack, a cyber attack as well. The attackers are very well aware of that. Uh, so that means uh, it is uh, possible, but very uh, not feasible in many cases. So of course, as mentioned, blockchain is not equal to Bitcoin, but Bitcoin is one of the primary and very showcase example, uh, which can be explained to explain the features of some of the features of the technology. I'm not talking about here uh, probably all the details of the technology, but this is overly simplified. Let's say if I want to send money from point A to point B or any type of transactions, it can be smart contracts as well. Let's say I have millions of other nodes as well in the system, if it's a public system. So if I want to send that message or money here from one to eight, seven or point A to point B, so the, a transaction request is just broadcasted to the system. The transaction is broadcasted to the peer-to-peer -peer P2P network that consists of computers like uh, GPU-based computers, FPGA-based computers, and other known nodes. And then the network of the nodes uses the known algorithms. These are cryptographic algorithms to validate the transactions and use the user status. In this case, uh, we have bit miners. If you are talking about Bitcoin, of course, there are different methods and uh, mechanisms in this case, which can be used. Once the verification is done, then that means once we build the trust, then uh, the information that we propose to be added to the chain of the existing uh, blocks, uh, it's called therefore blockchain, it will be validated and the transaction is, is combined with the other transaction uh, once, the, once it's verified. Uh, and our new information can be also in, injected to the, the new block and that new block is added to the existing system and officially sent to every single member of the system. Therefore, it's distributedly uh, just uh, sent to everyone uh, and everyone gets the copy of that stuff so that uh, if the trust is built, uh, the person sitting here on the point A can also release the money and send it here. The money can be in fiat currency or cryptocurrency, it doesn't matter. Uh, and uh, that person also can send their physical commodity from point B to point A, depending on the case. Of course, what is the relationship between the uh, energy systems and blockchain technology? There are many, but uh, if you would like to overly simplify our uh, evolution, evol evolution of power systems, yesterday we had one directional uh, power flow, which where we had uh, bulk power plants, like hydroelectric power plants or very large, thermal power plants, we have transmission distribution system operators, prosum uh, consumers here, uh, industrial or like residential or commercial. So the flow, power flow was were mainly one directional. This is the old system. So the new system is evolving. We have more electric vehicles. We have prosumers. Prosumers are the generators and the consumers at the same time with photovoltaic panel at home. Uh, we can have self-consumption. Uh, you use our own energy here. If you put batteries, you can extend it. We may have like mobile batteries here in electric vehicles and many other elements as well on and off. So as you see here, the, the commodity transactions, that means power, electrical power, is not in one directional, it is bi-directional and more complex. So that means uh, trading and operational flexibility has a great potential to optimize the uh, existing stuff. So that means uh, it is more decentralized, centralized information systems, including centralized databases, may not be possible to solve entire problem right now because it's more sophisticated we may need in some cases decentralized and distributed information systems so i am not in the position here to promote of course to just offer a blockchain technology to solution to everything but it is just one of the very promising technologies which is supposed to be used in an orchestrated way this part is very important with other communication information communication technologies, including artificial intelligence, even existing uh, systems like SCADA, supervisory control and data acquisition, programmable logic controller, or like fiber optic cables, wireless communication, anything you name. So it is, it's a part of the game. 
uh, in many cases, of course, it can be dominant in some use cases, but I wouldn't propose, I think no one should propose that it will be the only and unique solution for many use cases. Therefore, if we just have healthy expectations from the technology, then technology might be a solution. Otherwise, uh, we, we can just use the hype buzzwords, and if you are not able to fill the gap, so we will just awake the hypes and disappoint the people and industry. Therefore, it is better not to fake ourselves and the industry, just uh, use the tools as it is designed. Of course, this technology is also evolving. Then that means uh, the current technology will be different than tomorrow's technology, but the core technology is there. Building the trust is the core feature. So uh, our research group in the university, this is not IEEE work uh, in Norwegian Technical University, uh, Science and Technology, NTNU. We investigated more than 250 companies, use cases, uh, and the projects where the energy is used, a blockchain is used in the energy field. So it was a massive work based on our investigation. So the peer-to-peer -peer energy trading, which is also one of the uh, transactive energy use cases, is one of the most popular one. And you can see the other use cases here, like grid transactions, payment settlement platforms, sustainability attribution, certificates, REC certificates. There are different names for it. But uh, long story short, uh, of course, even though the peer-to-peer -peer energy trading is the most popular one, it doesn't mean that it has the highest potential. It is just like one of the most popular one. Uh, there might be a slightly, I would say, hype on this part, but it's, a, it's still a very good use case to understand some of the features of blockchain, but it may not provide too many additional edit value alone. Sometimes we need to operate them in a combined way, depending on the case. So as mentioned, uh, we have IEEE SA, SA Standards Association, uh, funded or backed a working group where we aim to develop standardization uh, for blockchain related activities where we apply in the field of energy. And of course, this is the overly simplified version of the Rolly chain, uh, where we have bulk generators, distributed energy generator resources, consumers like grid edge, and we have smart meters, other elements like digital substations, and many other elements here. I don't want to name all of them. You can see them, some of them, and most of you has great expertise most likely on individual parts of it. So we have very large landscape and we have several opportunities to digitalize our system, but we, we need to select the right tools for the right purpose. That's the challenge. So for this purpose, uh, we just wanted to demystify some of the steps, like we wanted to have like systematic approach where, uh, where we would develop uh, some solutions uh, or standardization later on because it's, it's still a long-term target for us and first of all we use segmentation methods for instance we have this volley chain the upper, upper part of this figure where we have bulk generator transmission system operators dso retailers overly simplified of course markets and the transactions are very complicated we have electric storage units Renewable energy resources can be connected in many places. Electric vehicles, it can be connected to here in the distribution system or homes. And these are the use cases where it may happen, right? Uh, if we are talking about origin track recording, let's say if we have renewable energy resources, which is connected to the transmission system here, let's say very large scale offshore wind farm. So we can track record the origin of that energy right this is track recording as you see here we have one to four numbers these are the features that we provide uh, with blockchain technology like all the simplified explanation of course so the first feature is immutable data recording and the second feature is financial transactions as you see here we don't have really a real commodity flowing if you are talking about labeling of the energy resource we have data recording of course against this data recording if it's a service we might have money transaction, right? Number one and number two. But if we are talking about peer-to-peer -peer energy trading or decentralized and peer-to-peer -peer energy trading like this, of course, it may happen most of the time on distribution level and also the grid edge where the prosumer is. So we have the immutable data recording, financial transactions, and energy as a commodity is flowing be between uh, one neighbor to another neighbor or one neighbor to 
next neighborhood or one neighbor to the market is a pool and that means the commodity is there therefore we have uh, box number three and uh, for instance if we are using smart contracts in order to subscribe the system or many other activities we can have smart contract feature as well so all those four elements can be accommodated for this use case so we have many other use cases actually off the record uh, it's not official ieee work but for from our academic work uh, work outcome we, we find more than 65 different use cases uh, which can be applied in the field of energy and some of them are realistic of course some of them are futuristic but this list that you can see here is based on very solid uh, literature review survey and industrial surveys as well so how we define uh, the blockchain enabled transactive energy interactions right we have blockchain technology we have power energy systems we have transactive energy uh, systems which is not exactly the same thing with the power systems because we have some use cases which are not transactive energy use cases and we have other topics like ict like cybersecurity and blockchain related part the intersection point gives us uh, the playground that we are operating where we are talking about bcte blockchain enabled transactive energy as an intersection of those domains so what does it mean in terms of uh, like later on we will discuss the standardization efforts like transactive energy might have market mechanisms uh, like measurement analytics automation many other use cases and but we, this is like happening right this is an old system and existing but what we want to or intend to do is just uh, if we can like increase the trust if we will build a trusted decentralized environment supported by distributed ledger technology so the blockchain enabled transactive energy is a new layer or proposed as a new layer uh, that adds the trustability traceability transparency and interoperability of course uh, to the existing te trans uh, uh, transactive energy layer that were missing so we have some efforts to work with p2030 uh, like these are more uh, older working group more than i think one and a half decades or something like that it is active we try to do our best to update the existing architectures of smart grids within ieee as well so it's a longer process so the emerging transaction operations may be touching too many elements from dso tso bulk generator distributed energy resource provider uh, or microgrid if you have microgrid or prosumers uh, there are many use cases or there are many uh, operations that we can support that like price signals market price signals can also be like uh, supported by using uh, process by using centralized systems or decentralized systems in this case using blt and many other technologies here we might have bilateral agreements or similar activities as well so uh, what does IEEE SAP 2418.5 working group uh, intending to do is we try to develop uh, like open interoperable uh, holistic framework or standardization framework which can be applied in the field of energy primarily power of course uh, it can also cover the derivatives like certificates or hydrogen energy later on so we can use distributed ledger technology like blockchain or non-blockchain technologies uh, to just upgrade our existing system uh, with more most recent digitalization technologies like blockchain technology uh, where we will have more smarter and trustable systems so why this working group again uh, we would like to accelerate the industry adoption uh, we we are also trying to demystify the technology and applications this is also this webinar is also counted uh, can be counted as uh, such kind of efforts because we are giving our best for almost three years more than three years to just give webinars invited speaks uh, panels white papers uh, conference papers full papers uh, newsletters uh, to mystify this technology what we can do uh, uh, I can remember that three years ago there had been massive uh, resistance from our very experienced colleagues as well that they claim that blockchain technology does, doesn't have anything to do and uh, but nowadays we clearly know that there's a potential that we can unlock it's an enabler technology but we cannot expect uh, everything from uh, blockchain technology we should be very careful it is one of the very high potential tool digitalization tools for us to change the game disrupt the markets and probably the systems as well 
So we want to create some intervolute models and look, take a look, closer look at cybersecurity, especially this is one of our very strongest points here. Uh, we have a recent paper on that. If you are interested in, you can take a look at it. I will give the title later on. So this is the summary of our working group. We have uh, we we define the initial reference framework. This is step number one, and we have very detailed literature reviews, like I mentioned, uh, sometimes supported by the academia like us, but we have also in this industry run surveys uh, and we just merge all this information and expert opinion. We have more than 100 people show interest to our activities. So most of them are from the industry and we have some academic colleagues as well. Some of them are in leading positions, even in sea level uh, from all over the world, including China, Asia Pacific, uh, United States and Europe and we, we would like to have more participants from Africa as well. So we have, like, we try to map the references with framework with use cases. We have task force use cases, as you can see here, very critical. And we have task force interoperability, interoperability. we have task force cybersecurity and smart contracts. I'm also leading this smart contracts task force and co-chairing the entire uh, working group. So we have also another sister organization, uh, which is under, IEEE, not SA, not Standards Association. It's a feature direction organization. It is exactly focusing on this topic. Uh, our colleagues, uh, Paul Heitman and Claudio Lima and many others are leading them, but we have also interactions. We don't want to create double work. We just want to collaborate and increase the efficiency, especially uh, the architecture framework, demonstration projects that they are planning and the communication with external world is also shared activity with our uh, work, working group and some of the, most of the working group members are in the common domain. So we are active here and there. But we have other, other IEEE organizations like uh, uh, P2030 and many other organizations that we try to handshake. We also have relationship with SIGRE and other uh, non-IEEE standardization bodies as well, which can be considered in this box as well. So this is the summary. If you would like to join us, and participate our activities, you are welcome. I will share my email address at the end of the slide so you can just get in touch with me. So I will let you in if you are, if you are interested and participate our efforts. So the task force use cases, especially it is related to this today's presentation as well, uh, is just focusing on the task forces, uh, like the use cases where we can use uh, blockchain technology and have more very detailed investigations on that, starting from definitions, do we need blockchain technology? We skeptically uh, ask those questions many times. So especially the peer-to-peer -peer energy trading or peer-to-market or uh, state estimation, data acquisition for IoT or uh, SCADA systems or many other similar systems are can be considered as uh, like there or distributed energy resources integration type of uh, applications, even the uh, like centralized and decentralized or mobile uh, energy storage uh, ecosystem can also be just managed by using those activities. Of course, we might also integrate artificial intelligence in forecasting or many other activities as well. So another uh, broader cluster of use cases, I would say, the environmental community management like REC energy trading uh, and many other activities can also be just accomplished uh, by using blockchain technology. Uh, which are able to just get rid of uh, many unwanted third parties, increase the efficiency, decrease the time, transaction times, and uh, just eliminate some of the double count problems. Because in existing systems, uh, the generated uh, certificates can be also be just double counted in the system because the retired information, the retirement of the certificates, that, which means that the once you use the certificates which are generated, then they're supposed to be retired. It's a term, technical terminology. Sometimes it's not like registered in the centralized, centralized databases uh, where it is managed. Therefore, blockchain technology is a great solution and very easy to implement, according to me, uh, for such kind of applications. Of course, electric vehicle charging is very promising technology as well, where we can uh, use blockchain technology. Uh, like in different countries, there are different rules and different use cases but this is one of the most important use cases where we can deploy uh, blockchain technology, of course, with other uh, technologies, even optimization, advanced optimization and artificial intelligence can also play an integral role here. And of course, communication technologies. So uh, I was talking about the 
BCT initiative, uh, which is a sister organization. Uh, that organization has like uh, responsibility or agreement to support the standards, which is our organization at the same time, like we try to develop standards. They are proposing architecture and demonstrations, and of course, communication in terms of like dissemination activities and similar activities that I'm right now uh, participating is also one of the roles of that organization, which is led by one of our colleagues, Paul Heitman, and Claudio Lima is also uh, one of the leaders in that group. We have many other colleagues here because of the lack of time, I think it's better I cannot start accounting all of them, but we have very valuable and seasoned colleagues uh, in, uh, that they are in, 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 this, in this organization. So if you have interest, you can also go to the web page and download the existing uh, position paper. It's around 45 to 50 pages position paper, which might help you to just uh, have a quicker overview about the BCT and the use of uh, blockchain technology in the field of energy, especially around transactive energy use cases. Um, task Force Cybersecurity is one of the most strongest task forces that we have. We have more than 15 uh, very experienced cyber physical security experts who are also focusing on the power systems or critical infrastructure uh, from PNNL, uh, from GE, from uh, recently we have some uh, agreement or just like a verbal agreement that's right, right now with other organizations like Mitra. Uh, they want to join us. Uh, so we, we had a recent paper which is shown here, uh, as you can see here, the title standardization of distributed ledger technology security stack uh, power uh, and energy applications. So this is one of the state of the art outcomes in the field of intersection field of uh, distributed ledger technology, cybersecurity and power systems. So I strongly recommend you to take a look at it. Uh, item four, I think three days ago, it's officially out. Uh, so it's free accessible, open, open source. Uh, this is an open journal, uh, therefore you can take a look at this. We have the team of interoperability, uh, which is designed to evaluate uh, domains and uh, building blocks. Uh, we try to determine the terminology, ontology, taxonomy related to interoperability, which is also taking a closer look at existing IEEE language. Uh, which is developed over two decades at, at least, uh, and we create the interoperability frameworks with respect to cybersecurity, communication, uh, legislative issues, uh, power systems, and many other activities. And they try to harmonize. This is a very challenging task with existing feature, uh, existing and feature IEEE and other international uh, DLT related communications and uh, IoT related standards or cybersecurity. There are many aspects of it. So we try to determine, uh, come up with some terminologies, even the, the definition of the blockchain DLT interoperable definition and many other uh, taxonomy and interfaces. So it is a very massive work and we need more volunteers. If you are willing to join us, you're welcome. So beside my vice chair position, I'm also leading uh, the task force under our working group. Uh, this is smart contracts. So we investigate the possible use of or potential use of smart contracts in the field of energy and identify how to utilize smart contracts in the field of energy by considering stability, cybersecurity or physical security, legality and some other legislative issues as well. So we are defining the terminology taxonomy, try to map the use cases with the smart contract, uh, smart contract technology and take a look at the, these are handshaking uh, activities with other task forces like uh, cybersecurity and interoperable aspects. So uh, the team uh, is built, established two months ago, but probably this was our fastest paper at all. Within one and a half weeks, the great team, <laughs> we came up with uh, an IEEE uh, conference paper within I think seven business days. Uh, so it was a great success. So uh, you can take a look at the details later on when it will be published, it's accepted from IEEE ISGT North America. So we are working on the cybersecurity as a smart contract aspect of uh, uh, where we use blockchain technology, of course, in the field of energy. So I'm approximating to the end, uh, which is given to me in, in terms of time limit. Uh, so uh, as an outlook, uh, I think you are aware of such kind of Gardner uh, hype, hype curves, uh, more or less it's matching, of course, 
we have two very important uh, industry 4.0 technologies. One of them is AI, artificial intelligence. The other one is uh, distributed ledger technology. Of course, we have too many hypes and bubble and too many realities and potential. Uh, my recommendation would be just to try to filter out the hype around it and try to use the technology as it is intended to. And we need to orchestrate the technologies, the third message. And we, we cannot force a technology which is not designed for it, right? These are the basic rules if you would like to design your system uh, from scratch or from certain level. And as you can see here, uh, the AI is evolving, the civil ledger technology is evolving. The new economy, which will be built or it's already building, I mean, the, the foundations are coming right now globally after pandemic times, which will be based on decentralized energy systems like uh, blockchain technology, but probably different generation, uh, different features will be also supported. And artificial intelligence is uh, shaping many activities in our daily lives. So the new technologies will appear with the combination of DLT, distributed ledger technologies and AI. I think I, sh I mustn't be a very expert to foresee this. We try to apply some of those joint applications uh, like in real life, uh, like pilot projects or something like that, which is not the scope of our presentation today. So they are real, they are applicable. Uh, so I think uh, you can just grab the technologies and try to apply in your field. The energy landscape is, as a concluding remark, is changing uh, due to the cost increasing and uh, like with other uh, impacts as well, side cost impacts. Uh, we have digitalization, decarbonization, and uh, many other impacts which are uh, just influencing our landscape in global level or national level. And prosumers, new players like prosumers uh, and aggregators and many other activities are coming right now. Uh, players are coming to the market mm -hmm. and uh, the conventional electric power grid uh, is evolving and we need new uh, definitions of it. We need to redefine, rethink many of them. Blockchain enabled transactive energy BCT systems can fill the gap uh, to benefit the prosumers and consumers uh, to provide more benefits, added value to the grid operations. And especially it's expected that the two very emerging uh, uh, industry 4.0 technologies like AI, artificial intelligence, blockchain or DLT have great and massive impacts uh, to disrupt the future upcoming digital uh, economies, which, is, which will be also very applicable uh, for the power markets and systems landscape. And very last message, of course, uh, I, I want to connect this, all these efforts to our mission as well. It's essential to develop a reference architectural framework or standardization framework to accommodate BCT and other use cases uh, requirements for, uh, in, uh, for the rapid uh, market integration or adoption for the future applications. So if you would like to have any questions to me or would like to join our, our efforts, don't hesitate to get in touch with me. So I guess I have one minute deviation, four to one minute. Uh, if you will have any questions, you can use the time now or any time after this. Yep. Okay. Um, Thank you, Dr. Thanks. Kali. We'll be taking questions. Sure. Um, yeah. No, people, you can post your questions in the chat and then we will be able to read them for uh, Dr. Kali. Um, uh, doctor, um, if I may ask, I think you already answered one that uh, anyone who wants to participate uh, in your uh, P2418.5 uh, group for the standard um, can, can actually email you. Uh, yes. but, according, but according to you, which, which use cases like um, do you feel blockchain maybe in the near future like maybe in the next five years that blockchain will play a significant role in i understand that the others are also as important but if you look at the, the the slide that you had on page nine where actually i think energy trading and grid transactions they take most majority of you know when you reviewed all the papers majority of the papers were on energy trading and grid transaction do you think that's what's going to be in the future? Those two will still hold that large share, or you think there will be another one that will emerge? Yeah, 
I will diplomatically answer this question for the following reason, uh, because I have different roles. Uh, if I'm talking in, on behalf of IEEE SA, I supposed to be very hygienic, right? Uh, what I'm talking about, because if I am not allowed to talk about any vendors, any specific technology or nothing, but I will switch my role to academic academician role and try to uh, use the privilege to use more space, right? To give my answer. Uh, so you are right. Uh, According to me, this is my personal opinion, it's not reflecting the IEEE group, working group. Uh, the peer-to-peer -peer energy trading seems to be more, more the most attractive one, but according to me, there are too many uh, players. They would like to get something from that piece of uh, cake, <laughs> but uh, that is very limited and very less, even the very sophisticated companies they are on the market, they are not able to identify what the real market value is available which is legitimately allowed in australia in europe in united states or africa so that means the according to me the peer to peer energy trading is a nice uh, sandbox ex example and has some very good potential uh, of course in market but if there are too many players around it i think to harvest very good result as a player uh, would be difficult and i agree with you uh, the grid transactions and management use cases might be uh, one of the most promising one in terms of it's a cluster at the same time it's not one there are many other use cases so uh, i would also second uh, that idea because it is corresponding to uh, many other activities as mentioned and has undiscovered potential this is the short answer probably but we have also one ongoing paper that we supposed to send it today to IEEE. We literally answered this question in a scientific way. If everything goes well, after one and a half months, uh, it's an IEEE access application to accelerate, expedite the results, to share the results with the entire uh, uh, audience. <laughs> you will see our official uh, academic result for that. Okay. No, no. Thanks a lot. Uh, guys, uh, you are encouraged to send your question in a, in a, in a, in a, in a chat. Uh, currently, I'm not seeing any question. I'm not sure if maybe Ming's on your side. You see any question? Um, but now, it's while I'm um, we've got a few questions. Our first question is from Mr. Pascal Motswasele. He's asking, when can okay. we expect BCTE standards to be ready, Dr. Kali? Uh, when do we expect BCT? Can I get the question again? When can we expect BCTE standard to be ready? Okay, uh, very good question. Uh, if we look at uh, the P2030 uh, standardization efforts, which started almost two decades ago, they are intending to come up with some uh, bundle of standardization for smart grids in general and some specific topic. So as you see here, it's a like continuing work. So when we started this three years ago, it was like starting oil and, uh, boiling the ocean, right? It is uh, it is very difficult, but we have a momentum right now. As you see here, even this presentation is full of some tangible outcomes, and many of them are also uh, available if you ask me to provide some copy. So we are in the in the phase of discovery. It is almost done. We are almost uh, writing the first draft of our 100-page position paper of draft document. So uh, these are tangible uh, efforts. But to be realistic, so blockchain technology is evolving. Energy systems are evolving with ICT, other ICT. So that means we have two moving targets. So very challenging task. Uh, so that means we are trying to keep an eye on the evol evolving status of the DLT and the other domain as well. So that means I would say that the holistic guidelines, there are different degrees of standardization, of course. Uh, we already start generating some content, but it may take decades. I mean, the, the tangible uh, and more useful uh, outcomes will be coming within two years uh, and probably it will take one decade or slightly more if you are talking about very uh, very structured uh, like 
standardization efforts. And our intention is not coming up with very structured one. We are trying to uh, develop, first of all, the agnostic in terms of technology and vendors uh, guidelines. This is the first target. And later on, if needed, we will just step by step go for deeper and deeper on the structurization of it. Okay, no, thanks, thanks. Thank you. Uh, uh, can 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 means can I take this one from Daniel? We will return back to the one from uh, Pascal. Okay. This one um outside the uh, crypto coins and demonstration project ways blockchain technology in active uh, practical use today. Do you know any other applications that are active other than cryptocurrencies? Are you referring to the energy field or in general? In, I think this referring to in general, I would, I would, I would assume. Okay. I will try to answer in general, right? Uh, blockchain technology is one of the most uh, strongest candidate to shape upcoming digital economies. So this is a revolution which is coming right now. It is not related only to the energy field. So uh, after post pandemic times, of course, uh, there will be new types of economies which is coming. Uh, so you will all observe how long will it take we will see that so that means that digital economy will need backbone technologies like uh, secure communication or like secure financial transactions and blockchain technology in different forms it mustn't be cryptocurrency but it can be new new forms of crypt cryptocurrency i don't want to enter that very risky territory about the international politics or money politics but many countries, uh, European Union, China, United States, you name it, uh, they are working on the national uh, like uh, digital currencies which will be based on blockchain, right? So that means our entire ecosystem, lifestyles, will be probably, potentially, I cannot forecast everything, uh, will be relying on, with some degree, to different forms of blockchain technology. But in the field of uh, DLT, uh, the, uh, the cryptocurrency is very limited uh, use, use case area, even though it's very important, especially the smart contracts are evolving. Uh, so there will be more and more applications of smart contracts which are coming, immutable track recording of uh, like uh, the things, I would say. I said the things because it can be a tomato, uh, like any type of vegetable, or the diamonds, right? If the diamonds are originated from like blood resources, which where the kids and many other people are abused uh, during the harvesting process, right? And uh, if it can be recorded like that, the sellers of uh, the buyers of such kind of uh, diamonds will be very careful and it can be uh, like track recorded in a very sensitive way. So uh, it's another application area, supply, Chain management is another very promising application area, logistics uh, and the, uh, like defense. Uh, I don't want to talk about many projects over there. There are many use cases which is which is very sensitive. And of course, finance uh, is a very important one because decentralized finance is one of the very promising areas where the blockchain technology and DLT in general can be used. And energy, I would say, is one of the most promising areas if we rank three sectors, industrial segments or verticals, or four, uh, I believe energy will be in the top four area where blockchain technology, beside other technologies, again, I don't want to hype, overly hype any technology, but some technologies have uh, like critical roles, right, in the history as well, the invention of rails, in the domestication of horses, and at the same time, uh, like the invention of writing alphabets and writing, <laughs> uh, changed the human being's history, right? I will not say that blockchain technology will be the same, but uh, it is evolving to change many things in future that after five to 10 years, you will observe uh, such kind of massive changes. So long story short, uh, we don't propose blockchain technology as a hero for everything. A solution for everything but it's an enabler technology which has a great impact and it will definitely change uh, the, the the structure of the upcoming markets even the internet technology it's called web 30 uh, is proposed to be based on dlt so i think if the new backbone technology of internet the ecosystem right now which enables us to talk currently 
will be just using uh, some form of DLT or similar technologies. So I think the answer is clear. Uh, okay. No, no, uh, thanks. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to squeeze as many questions as I can, uh, Doc. Uh, mm -hmm. One of those questions is for, for blockchain energy trading, do you have thoughts on how we can solve the Oracle problem? The very fine, um, very fine meter readings, preventing fraud, tampering, and etc. Okay, this question has multiple uh, perspectives. I will try to cover some of them at least. <laughs> the oracles okay. are very important elements of interoperability, right? It, because they are most of the time uh, located in the off the chain ecosystem. Uh, their own chain ecosystem, off chain ecosystem. If you are look at, looking at the anatomy of such kind of system, the on chain ecosystem is basically the database where we capture uh, the information in the crypto network, right? Which is very limited. And if you are using classical blockchain technology, so if you unnecessarily overload the on chain, then you're, you you will have a scalable to problem. It will be very massive because you don't delete the previous track records at the end of the day, it's accumulated. So that means the design of oracles, location of oracles is an interoperable to problem, design problem and scalable to problem. But at the same time, uh, it has many other aspects as well, right? Cybersecurity and many other aspects. Uh, probably I wasn't able to capture all of the aspects, uh, but I just wanted to name at least three to four of them. Uh, if the answer is not uh, precise enough, don't hesitate to get in touch with me. I will try to give more details per email or something like that. Oh, okay. No, thanks. Uh, one, another one is the BCT blockchain transactive energy more energy efficient than normal blockchains out there. I think because of the coin mining can be very energy intensive. I think that's what they're trying to understand it. Okay, so I think it is better to elaborate the difference between DLT and blockchain. So if you are talking about uh, like proof of work, POW, uh, type of uh, public permissionless network where we spend too much effort and energy to sustain the trust, like Bitcoin. So it is very energy intensive, right? It means the entire blockchain network is right now uh, consuming more electrical power than Texas. Texas is larger than many other countries in the on the planet, right? So that means necessarily or unnecessarily, I will not uh, have any discussions on that part. We are burning electrical energy for just sustaining sustaining Bitcoin system, right? So then that means if you are using such kind of proof of work type of stuff, which is far away from the centralized databases on the left hand side in the spectrum. And if you look at the centralized database on the right hand side, I have the figure, but it's in the book right now. I cannot show it to you. Uh, uh, then, then that means if you are using proof of authority, proof of stake type of consensus mechanism where you have less efforts to validate the transactions, then that means you need less computational power, you need less resources, then inevitably your transaction speed and your transaction fees and the energy that you consume will be very less then that means this is a like very wrong information <laughs> that blockchain technology all the LTs are consuming high amounts of electrical power that is not true uh, that is only true for proof of work and we don't usually use bitcoin's infrastructure for many energy use cases we use more other versions of it which is more like environmental friendly or quicker transactions Oh, okay. No, no, thanks. Um, the other one, if you still have time, any chain is as strong as its weakest link. What, in your opinion, is a weak link as far as using blockchain in energy transactions? Uh, may I have the question again? So I wasn't able uh, to... Okay, any chain is as strong as its weakest link. Uh, what, in your opinion, is a weak link as far as using blockchain in energy transactions? Okay, so uh, if I'm not, if I didn't understand the question wrong, let's say under normal conditions, we have very complicated cascaded systems which are connected to each other if you would like to come up to a professional industrial system, right? Let's yeah. say we design a substation, digital substation, which has many elements connected to each other, right? 
cybersecurity, communication, physical systems, power electronic devices, X, Y, Z. So it's a kind of value chain connected to each other, right? Uh, where blockchain is not in the game yet. So these are cyber physical ecosystem connected to each other. And uh, each and every intersection is like a drawback, uh, like a weakest point of any system in physical life as well. So that means, according to me, if we are talking about such kind of chains and the weakest point of those chains, of course, if we start talking about digitalizing the ecosystem more and more in general without blockchain technology, of course, we are increasing the, uh, the attack surface for cyber attacks or such kind of threats, correct? So according to me, a general answer is any intersection which is uh, very critical for that critical infrastructure, whatever the critical infrastructure is, power systems or similar. So that is the weakest point of the entire ecosystem. But of course, we have vulnerabilities in physical world as well. So intersection point of these two uh, vulnerabilities in terms of resiliency, of course, it is the uh, very weakest part. But if we integrate blockchain technology into the system, of course, uh, we provide solutions, but we provide also like new surface of attack at the same time. So if you look at all this system, uh, probably I'm just heading to the very different perspectives, which is not asked, but I probably give you some more evidences on the broader ecosystem. So the weakest point of this entire stuff is probably uh, the lack of uh, the manpower who knows what blockchain can do in general and but at the same time uh, the technologies right now they have also drawbacks the existing dlts which 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 can be also in terms of cyber security uh, open door or they provide also some additional help for cyber security as well it's a kind of two edge sword uh, so there are many aspects of it i mean if i start talking about that probably it will take longer time but i hope i understood the question and gave some proper answers Okay, no, no, thanks. Uh, and then if you, I think that question came from uh, Alios Agumu. Alios, if you still need more clarity, please uh, feel free to contact, to contact Dr. Kali. Dr. Kali, one last one, I know maybe we are just over time. Is there IEEE also looking into water utility use cases or have you came across any application into water? Uh, that comes from Pascal. Uh, okay, utility applications like water. water yeah, use it. yeah, water utilities. Uh, yeah, because... what you, actually, yes, uh, it's a very good question. Again, like cybersecurity, data science, data analytics, and uh, similar to other digitalization technologies, DLT is applicable, very applicable in the field of water utilities or waste management, right? But our working group, uh, IEEE 24. 18.5 is not focusing on uh, water uh, water uh, facilities only with respect to if you are using pumps or any type of filters which consumes electrical power this is only electrical load in this content for us but there might be other verticals uh, there are i think uh, more than 10 other verticals uh, our one is the fifth one therefore we have dot five uh, energy uh, we have health we have other verticals as well so uh, you can take a look at it if you would like to be a part of it, but blockchain technologies definitely can be used uh, for, for that purpose. Yeah. Thanks a lot, Doc. Uh, Mings, I'm not sure if you see any question. Uh, I thought I might have covered all the questions. No more questions, thank you, Ezram. Okay, now Doc, before you go, uh, do you have any master students or PhD students at your university? Or are you looking to get some PhD and master students in the future? Actually, uh, we do have two PhD students and more than six master students uh, in the university that I am, actually I'm supervising directly. Uh, if there'll be some cases, uh, you can get in touch with me. Uh, the rules in Norway is slightly different than Europe and United States. But uh, this is a specific question. So if someone would like to uh, have such kind of opportunity, just let me know. But usually in Nor Norway, uh, they require to have full funding, uh, very high amounts of full funding in terms of budget for three years, at least guaranteed in the beginning. 
So usually, we if we have PhD positions, uh, it is associated with the projects. We have official regulations that we need to, we have to uh, just publish the position uh, description in the internet, their official portals. And uh, we need to investigate all applications uh, like applied on that specific position. It's not like uh, just straightforward starting a PhD position by using an email traffic or something like that. The best uh, advice in this case is just following uh, uh, the portals about academic jobs or specific job applications in NTNU, our university. Uh, if it is about master's degree, we have inter international master's degrees, which are also, some of them are in English. So if you would like to apply for those programs, uh, I think with or without scholarship, uh, it can be a private support uh, needed probably from your from the parents of the students or themselves, uh, it's also possible. So if there'll be some questions around it, I can try to answer, but the PhD positions are strictly regulated here, depending on the budget and the project, yeah. Okay, no, I, I understand. And uh, I guess uh, anyone who's uh, here um, uh, also got that, but they can also contact you if they've got sure. uh, further, further questions. Uh, does anyone have a question? Uh, if not, maybe my last question, I saw in your slide, you mentioned we are used to smart meters, but you literally have smart e-meter. Uh, did I see that correctly? Uh, yeah, you are right. Uh, what is the smart e-meter? Uh, exactly the same thing, because it's electric meter and smart and electric meter are, are the same thing. Sorry if it's misleading. So it's not a uh, different technology if you are using smart meter, which is electronic. Uh, this is the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. No, thanks. Thanks. I just wanted that clarity. Uh, Mings, back to you in the absence of uh, any further questions. Thank you very much, Israel. And Dr. Kali, thank you so much for availing yourself for um, doing this presentation today. Ladies and gentlemen, as attendees, if you have any questions for Dr. Kali, you're welcome to email me directly, minx at saiee.org.za or webinars at saiee.co.org.za, my apologies. Um, then I can forward the questions to Dr. Kali and put you in contact with each other. But thank you for joining us today. Please look out in a few weeks, you'll receive your CPD validation certificate with um, your certificate of attending this webinar. Thank you for joining us today and we will see you next time. Take care and goodbye. Thank you for inviting. Take care. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye. Bye. Thanks, folks.